Good day. Our topic in this video is evaluating functions. So what do we expect to learn? Our learning objectives are the following. First, you should be able to understand how to evaluate a function. And second, perform evaluation on different functions. With this, the essential question that needs to be answered, how to evaluate a function. Before we answer the essential question, let us first define function notation. Let's say for example, we have f of x is equal to 3x minus 4. In this function, the notation used is f of x. This is actually the commonly used function notation to denote a function, but you can actually use g of x, h of x, or any other letters. And in a function, we have input and output. The input here is the x, which is the independent variable, and the output is the f of x, which is the dependent variable. Let us have a review. When you were in junior high school, you learned how to evaluate algebraic expressions. Let us check if you still remember how it is done. Let's try item number 1. Evaluate 5x minus 10 when x is 8. The answer here is 30. How about item number 2? The answer is negative 1. The idea here is the same with evaluating functions. So let's have the rule now. The rule is we replace the variable in the function with a number or an expression. We can think of evaluating function as a function machine, just like the image at the right. So we take an input x inside the function, which goes to a certain process, then produces an output, which is the f of x. This means that the value of the function depends on the value of x. Let us now apply the rule to some examples. Given the functions f, g, and h, let us evaluate them based on the given values. First example, we have to evaluate the function f when x is 4. Following the rule, we'll just simply replace x in the function with 4. So we have 2 times 4 plus 1. Following the order of operations, we have to multiply before we add. So we have 8 plus 1. Combine these two, it becomes 9. So the value of the function f when x is 4 is 9. Let's move to another example. Here, we're asked to evaluate the function g when x is negative 5. Following the same procedure, we have 4, absolute value, negative 5, minus 3, minus 7. We have to combine the terms inside the absolute value, so we have 4, absolute value, negative 8, minus 7. Note that in dealing with absolute value, the absolute value of a negative number is positive. This becomes 4 times 8 minus 7. Multiply 4 and 8, it gives us 32. Minus 7, the answer is 25. So the value of the function g when x is negative 5 is 25. Let's go to our third example. So what can you say about the given? The given is an expression. Though the given is an expression, we'll still be applying the same procedure. So here, we have to replace all x with 2x plus 3. So this gives us 2x plus 3 squared plus 3 times 2x plus 3 minus 2. Here, we have to recall how to square a binomial. So when we square a binomial, we have to square the first term. So we have 4x squared. Next, we have to get twice the product of the first and the last terms, so we have 12x. And for the last term, we have to square 3, so we have 9. Next, we have to distribute 3 to 2x plus 3, so we have 6x plus 9. Then just simply copy negative 2. Next is combine like terms, so we have 4x squared plus 18x 
plus 16. So the value of the function h when the input is an expression 2x plus 3 gives us an expression 4x squared plus 18x plus 16. So in all our examples, we can conclude that when the input is a number, the answer is also a number. But when the input is an expression, it gives us an expression as well. In all the examples that we had, we can apply the rule in n functions, except for piecewise defined function. So the next is how to evaluate a piecewise defined function. To evaluate a piecewise defined function, decide which piece of the function to plug in the given value of x based on the condition provided. Let us apply this to some examples. Given the function of x, it contains three subfunctions and each has corresponding condition for its domain. For our problem, we have to evaluate the function when x is negative 2. Where is negative 2 located in our conditions? Negative 2 is between negative 3 and 0. So it means we have to use 2x plus 8 to evaluate this function. Substitute negative 2, so we have 2 times negative 2 plus 8. It becomes negative 4 plus 8. Simplify, we have 4. So the value of the function when x is negative 2 is positive 4. Let's try another example. Here, we have to evaluate the function when x is negative 10. Same procedure, locate negative 10. Negative 10 is less than negative 3. So we have to use x squared minus 4 as our function. Substitute negative 10, so we have negative 10 squared minus 4. The square of negative 10 is positive 100. Minus 4 gives us 96. So the value of the function when x is negative 10 is 96. This time, it is your turn to apply what you have learned from our discussion. You may pause the video so you can answer the questions. Let's check your answers. Item number 1, the answer is x squared minus 6x plus 1. For item number 2, it's 2 is squared to 5. Let's have the next items. Again, you may pause the video. Answer in item 1 is negative 10. In item number 2, it's 11 over 2. In summary, here are the things that you have to take note about the lesson. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. So if you want to learn more, please subscribe on my YouTube channel, Math Room by Teacher Joanne, and turn on the notification bell to be updated.